Hey YouTube, well today I thought I'd show you what you got to go through to put in a timing chain and guides and water pump in an Intrepid 2.7. I believe all these motors are the same. Uh, this is a 1999. I got the car, pretty good deal. Um, it ran, it just, the only problem was it smoked like a freight train and it had a bad cylinder back here. I did a compression check, I believe number six in the far back here. I uh, only had 80 pounds of pressure. The rest of the cylinders had close to 150, so obviously I knew right then what it was, uh, what was causing the problem. And also the valve stem seals. They're all, these cars have a problem with smoking with this valve stem seal. So I went on YouTube and ordered everything, not YouTube, eBay, and ordered all the parts I needed to do the valve stem seals. You've got two head gaskets and got everything I need to do to put that together. And last night I ordered a separate package deal for the time and chain guides water pump oil pump got it all for hundred and thirty dollars i mean just incredible deals on ebay if you look the right places and all that's coming so i'm gonna go ahead and just redo the whole thing because these water pumps and these cars uh they fail and they get water in the engine and they just disintegrate the engine and they had a problem with these when they first come out so they did an updated water pump so once you get your new water pump stuff on, uh, his motors will run a long time if you take care of them. I know they get a bad reputation. Uh, the 2.7 two, two apparently is the one that blows up and doesn't run very long. But these motors run just as good as any other motor if you keep the oil changed. And don't run the piss out of them. You know, excuse my French, whatever. But um, I'll give you some ideas what you got to do to take this thing apart. I found a few things that no one mentions online or in the manuals how to pull these heads off, but the first thing I did uh, was to take the plenum off, and I'm going to show you back here. It's on the back of the car. I'm, I've got so many parts in my garage now, I can't even walk around. It's amazing how much stuff you collect after a while. Uh, there's the plenum. Uh, there's little bolts in there. See those little bolts? Those are eight millimeters. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I use a little deep socket. Uh, millimeter socket, you can get those out. Once you hook your hoses and your uh, throttle body, you're good to go. There is one bowl here I want to show you that's hidden that they don't show you about. It's right behind where your throttle cable hooks up. There's a bolt. It's a really long bolt. There it is. See it in my hand? Once you get that out of the plenum back here in the back, you're good to go. And there's one more little bolt back here. You see this little thing sticking up in the back? This, there's a bolt here that builds in the back of the plenum. You take this bolt out, I believe it's a 10 or a 13, and you see how it's kind of shaped there, how the, uh, where the bolt will slide up, that little groove cut in it there, the plenum will lift right up. But make sure you get all your little hoses and stuff off. Just take your time, and once you get that off, then you're uh, able to access the valve pan covers, and they're straightforward. You just unbolt them, pop them off, and you can pop the other side off while you're at it. This makes it a little easier. Uh, before I did that, I did take oh, 15, 20 minutes. I pulled the wiring harness I was off the side. I unhooked everything, hooked it from the uh, O2 sensor, the battery, uh, some stuff down there, and I just kind of pushed it off on the side over here to make it uh, a little easier to work on. Um, there is a lot of little hoses here and there. Uh, you want to watch. I already broke one of my little air lines here, so I was doing good until I did that. Snapped that off that I can, can replace that. Um, you can just make some notes and take a few pictures, you'll be okay. Uh, I believe after I got the uh, plenum off and the uh, the valve cam valve, co valve covers off, I went ahead and tucked the uh, front cover off, and here it is. Uh, it's pretty easy to take off. There's one little bolt that is a star. And if I set this around, it's right up here in the right left hand top corner. I marked it with some paint so when I put it back together I'll know which one it is. Uh, it's a little star. I believe it's a... Oh my gosh, don't quote me on it. I believe it's a 10. Let me look over here and see real quick. I've got it there. Uh, I think it's a T... T20. T20. It's one of those little things, but uh, if you have a little set, you can figure it out. The dress of bolts are just 10 and 18, and they're all laying down there. And once you pop that cover off, you're good to go. Now, I did have a little issue here. You don't have to take the power steering pump off and all that. I was going to, but I'm going to tell you what. When they put this power steering pump on here, 
Uh, there's a lot of bolts and crap here that it just a pain in the butt. So what I did, I took the pulley off the assembly here for the uh, serpentine belt. I took all, all these bolts out, pulled the bracket out. Uh, let's see, let me just show you here real quick. This might help a lot. If I can find it here, there's a really long bolt and the pulley. Uh, I'm not very organized tonight. I'm making this video just so I can help some people, but excuse me if I'm a little disoriented here. Uh, there's a bolt that comes out that goes in the back of this right here. Just pull this out. Once you get the pulley out of the way, uh, just kind of put it off the side. I got things in small piles so I can find everything. Then you can loosen this bracket up. Then this front cover of this timing gear here, assembly, you can take it out. You don't have to pull all the power steering pumps off and all that. You have to fish some of the bolts out between like the holes here on the pulley. But uh, I left one down there in the bottom. I don't know if you can see it behind that pulley there. I kind of left it in there. Let's see how good my camera work is tonight. Right there. See that little bolt back here behind the pulley? Left that in there and I just kind of loosened it because you can't get these bolts all the way up. They always hit the power steering wheel. I didn't want to pull it off and bust it, so uh, it was good enough to get <coughs> that uh, cover off. Now, see these big holes here? These are excess plugs for these guides. And here are my guides. This is why I ordered all the new stuff. Uh, the time and chain guides here. Oops. Did I just... Gosh, sorry about that. Man. I'm just making one continuous long video here as much as I can so I don't have to edit. Um, this here, this is one of the guides. The plastic's completely gone. On. And this is what this is for to excess these bolts. Right there and there. They go in there. On top of that head. That's what these are for. And to get that plug off, you need a big old... Uh, it is a... Shoot. Let's see if I can see the number. It is... A 12 it's a sort of like a uh, not a star I think what you call these like a big Allen socket but there's little plugs that go in there and here's one of them right there see how it's kind of centered and those screw in there with that like that and gives you some idea there's uh, three of them just so you know um, once you get those out you can disassemble everything with uh, to get into the chain and everything, but um, other than that, it's not it's not too bad so far. Now, what I what I'm doing, like I said, this head is bad. This side over here, the passenger side, is okay. I really want to change the valve stem seals, and there's the springs. I don't know if I take this the rocker arms and stuff off. If I can still change these by pulling the cylinders up and putting air pressure in them and all that, you know, um, and trying to grab those uh, springs. But I'll figure that out after I get this head off here and start working on this. But this side, you can see the, uh, the uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the cam, the cam, that's what you call it. Jeez, I'm having a slow night. It's, it's, it's cold, it's two below zero. Had a hell of a winter, and at least it's warm in here. You probably see my breath a little bit, but all right, back to the video. Um, once you get the cams off, you can pretty much take the head off. I've got all the bolts out of this head. There is one bolt that I didn't know about, I just tuck out, and I'll show you, especially on this head over here. Uh, it's down here. There's the bolt. The bolt bolts. Up under here, there is a, let's see, where is it? I don't know if you're going to be able to see it or not here. Um, I don't think you're going to be able to see it because, well, anyway, there's a bracket off the back of the power steering unit, which is uh, right there. And sorry, you're not going to be able to see it. But look under your car before you pull, start yanking on the head. There's a bracket. Once you get that exhaust clamp off, which is kind of a circle looking thing. Oh shoot, where did it go? This thing here, it kind of holds the exhaust with one bolt together. You just gotta get up there and it's a 13 and just take that bolt there out. 
it's it's on the bottom of the manifold and once you get that bolt off that will loosen that bracket I can't believe I can't well this is just wasting your time but I want to just, just tell you about that because that caused me about 30 minutes 25 30 minutes of work because once I pulled all the bolts and stuff off the head uh, the head moved on me and I couldn't get access to it but just so you know there's see how the exhaust is made there those bolts you can just uh, once you get that off you can sort of move the exhaust around a little bit there which makes it yeah, kind of film with one hand and move around with the other but you see this is pulled apart which is pretty ingenious of Dodge which wasn't a bad idea just one bolt okay so far I've uh, talked about time, time and chain and all that uh, the bracket pull it out of the way you're good to go I popped the chain off um, the chain is over here actually if this is the factory chain it still has the gold links I marked them red just so I wouldn't rub the so give me some idea when I took it apart what to do there's the old gears uh, like I said most of my stuff is good but I went ahead and ordered all the new brackets and stuff uh, pretty big guide and speaking of guide I also wanted to tell you one other quick thing I took out this big oil um, it goes on the side of this head right here. Screws in right here. If you can see a hole right there. There is a place right here where it screws in. I just got a big wrench or or a thumb wrench and I actually had enough room to take that out. But this is a tensioner, oil tensioner I believe they call it. Don't quote me. But I even ordered that. Now, um, once you're down to there, you're pretty good. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do next is take the oil pan off. It should be pretty easy. Although they say uh, if you're going to take the oil pan off, loosen the motor mounts underneath on this side. Don't take the bolts out. On the driver's side, loosen the motor mounts underneath to take the bolts out. And you can jack it up about three or four inches. And the oil pan will slide out because apparently there is a problem with the uh, brake. There's a brace under there. Uh, idle arm or something that we get in the way but we'll talk about that later but I want to do that just so I can clean the oil pan out but um, oil looks pretty dirty but I didn't see anything unusual and I didn't see much of a sludge problem with this no worse than any of the motor so I'm gonna go ahead and try to pull this head off here real quick I'll set this camera here and you can kind of watch me see what happens I don't know if I'm gonna be able to Set the camera somewhere here. Here, um, uh, well, we'll try it like this. See if I can see if that bracket I took off. See if that works now. If I can get this cut off. Let's see. One, two, three. Oh, there we go. Heads off. There you go. You see it live. It's off. Now we gotta set it somewhere. Let me set it over here on the floor real quick. Out of the way. All right. All right, there's the head. It's off. I haven't looked at it. We'll both look at it here in a second. Okay, let's look at the cylinders. Okay. Cylinder looks pretty dry. Full carbon, carbon, carbon dry. That one is a problem I had with it. And, yeah, look at all the silt my plug was wet now I got a feeling it was probably a burnt valve or head gasket oh look what we got we got a mouse a little mouse uh, nest you didn't see that all right well it's, like I said this car set for about a year so uh, that heads off so what I'm going to do is stop this for now and Look at this head and try to figure out where the leak was. I haven't decided yet if I want to take this head off. If I can get the valve stems on this side, that would be great. Uh, but I hate to take it off, but I wanted to show you something real quick here. Here is what I ordered on eBay. Got all of this. Got two head gaskets. Everything. Seals. For $50. $54 free shipping. There's my valve stem seals. Those are the pink. Vikings. 
I even got the oil pan gas, not the oil pan, the valve pan cover gaskets, intake gaskets, two head gaskets, not at fifty dollars. So last night I decided to go ahead and order all this up front. Tomorrow I'm getting all that good stuff. Um, one hundred and thirty-four dollars for everything. Even getting a new oil tensioner tomorrow when it gets here by uh, I got UPS. Uh, from anything else here, just make sure you take your bolts out of your little water. Uh, thermostat housing here kind of weird they have a little tiny bolt right there it's thermostat housing see right there on the back of the head make sure you take that out that was kind of binding me up oh sh you know what there's the bracket I was telling you about bolts on the bottom of the manifold on this head you have to take that bolt out right there get that out you're good to go all right i'm getting caught in mouth i think i've talked too long uh we'll check back here in a few minutes and give you an update and also, there's the intake. It was pretty easy to take out. So, so far, so good. It's been about two days on this. No hurry, but we'll get her done. All right, YouTubers. I'll be back here shortly and give you an update. All right, YouTubers. I am back. Um, so, so far, I've got, got the head off. And I was going to tell you, see the fine, why we had a miss back here, number six, no compression. I'll let you know. Well, guess what? Found it. There is... The head okay if you look at all these cylinders nice and dry nice and dry loaded with crap and it let's glue a little closer there what do you see what do you see just that just ain't right besides all the women I've dated so far in my life I've been married to <laughs> check that cell that uh, valve it's busted that is your exhaust there's the manifold side there's the intake side there's your intake intake all good Good, good, good to there. So that is why I had to miss a no compression. So if you have a 2.7 and, and have a miss on the driver's side cylinder closest to the firewall, that's probably going to be a problem. So all I got to do now is wait on my um, stuff to come in, which should be in here hopefully tomorrow, so I can go ahead and put together. I'm going to have to order a exhaust valve so I'll do that at the parts store locally tomorrow for about 12 bucks um the only thing I hated about this whole thing everything worked out perfect until I got time and chains uh the main time and chain like I said had gold links still in it from the factory so you can time it up pretty easy but the links on the cams well the chain doesn't have any gold links so there is a way to time that There's little dots back there I don't know if you can see the dots on the cam see that dot there dot there, well, if you count 12 links over to this dot, apparently you can put it back in time, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. If you need to do it, you can probably do research if you want to ch save your chains or something. But mine was stretched out because with this tensioner, it was all the way to this wear mark right there. It was all, I don't know if you can see, there's a little wear mark right there. Little circle. See that little line there? Right there. Once this goes past that, you're supposed to replace your guides and chain because things get stretched out over time. So, I don't know. That's what I've done so far. Oh, one other thing, the radiator. What I did, I popped this headlight out on the side, passenger side, pulled it out of the way, pulled the radiator up as far as I could. Well, actually, I tucked the fan, the electric fan off, and it's all back here, and I'll show you real quick. Once you take the fan off, you get the radiator off, you unhook the... Uh, Oh, the uh, transmission lines, and on this side you got two, uh, you got two little lines for the air conditioning. I pulled it up far enough and tuck one bolt out at a time with this headlight out. I just basically, it's, this headlight's kind of a pain in the butt to get out. You have to put plastic here and fiddle around it and pull it past this uh, shroud. But once you get it up so far, you can take the bolts out one at a time out of these hoses here. Got that one out, pulled up a little farther and got the bottom one out. Once you get the two bolts out you can pull the radiator right out and it makes it easier because what I did and a lot of people probably don't know about this, I took my impact wrench, I stuck a big socket on it and that's how I broke that bolt loose to get that bolt out of the uh, flywheel right there. And it was a lot easier for me just to spin that off, but I still had to take this off. How do you get that off? 
How do you take this off from that? Well, very easy. You see those little places there on the flywheel? Those little cut places right there. It's on a square. Let me see if I can get my finger in here. Right there. You can get a you can get your uh, I have a set of three jaw uh, claw pullers, and you can hook your claw under there, and that will pull it right off. It takes a little patience, but once you get that off, you're good to go. And it, my jaw pullers are over here. Let's set, just give you an idea. I have this kind of a setup here, but uh, that's what I use. Ah, little Pink Floyd. Oh yeah. But uh, once I get that taken care of, that baby there, we go okay. I've seen a lot of pictures on YouTube, uh, not you, well, on YouTube and online where these cars have the problem with these valves sometimes breaking. I don't know why. The interesting thing is, where did the piece go? Well, let's see. Nothing in that cylinder, so it's probably got ejected out through the. Manifold somewhere. So, uh, what else is there? I think I've covered everything. There's probably something minor I've forgotten, but if you have any questions, you can let me know. Um, like I said, um, I've been doing this for 30 years, and I flip a car now and then, but good looking car has a great body. It has nice interior. Yeah, you can't see anything, but it's got nice cloth seats. It's got even got an overhead console, which is kind of nice. It tells you the time and temperature and how many miles you're going. And there's my cam. I kept those everything perfect. See how I kind of made everything in a box, labeled everything, give an idea where. Oops, give you some idea where everything is, but camera's playing tricks on me. But make sure you kind of put things in places take a box and just kind of label things in order you want everything to go back in order the way it came out this is how you save lots of money and time because by the time you take your car to mechanic you can do all this be lots of money yeah and I've got a like I said I have a small garage I have everything kind of space, spaced out on the car and there's my Foul pan covers and very rusty looking tensioner. Man, this thing's rusty. West Virginia salt, I guess. I don't know. So, once my parts come in tomorrow for the rest of my car, we'll start putting the stuff back together. So, other than that, that's it. I've talked too much. I'm sure you're probably like, shut up. But I'll give you an idea on how it goes when I put this back together and we'll start it up and See how it goes, YouTubers. Thanks for watching my video, and if you have any questions, let me know. All right, I wanted to give you guys up a quick update here. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm putting my new valve seat seals into my head here, and here they are. I've got them uh, brand new, looking pretty good. These are the new ones uh, that came with my kit, and here are the old ones that I'm tuck out, and these things are done. They're shot. This rubber part here that actually keeps the oil out from running down on the valve. It is so hard I can't even push on it and uh, these things are shot. So that, that's, this was my smoking problem. And look at the crud. So I'm putting those in here tonight. And I did take out the valve that was uh, bad. And there's the valve. And check that baby out. It's completely shot. So I'm going to... I've ordered these two valves today from Napa, only uh, I think it was $17 each. I wanted to get them next day so I can put this head back together and start putting the motor back together. But so I'm doing tonight, tonight and uh, one quick thing when you're doing these keepers on these uh, uh, valves, what I've got is a tool that I got online. It's sort of it's uh, sort of a valve spring compressor. They actually use this for, I guess, uh, four-wheelers but you can still buy these they work great on uh, heads and so forth and they give you certain little things to put on the end that you can change off for the heads and you can get in there and pull the keepers off and all that good stuff and you can see there's the other one you get different ones to actually change 
uh, on the end of this tool. So that's what I'm doing tonight. And uh, one quick tip when you're doing it, get you a nice magnet. You see how everything sticks there, even the keepers. When I pop these keepers off, I push the springs down, I stick that magnet in there and sucks the keepers right off of the stems. And putting them back on, you just got to take your time, compress the spring, use a little oil, stick some uh, heavyweight oil on the uh, keepers and kind of slide them back on and they stick pretty good and you can use maybe a little tiny screwdriver to spin them around and to get them uh, back in the right place. But you can see I got this one out right there now and what I'm doing, this is the new valve seal I'm putting in and what I'm using is a socket regular old socket to go over that and what I'm doing I'm putting that putting that over the socket let me show you real quick here um, put the uh, valve stem down like that on there and I take this and I take a little tiny hammer and I tap it all the way down so it's flush and that's how you change these out so uh, that's the trick I wanted to show you better than that you gotta take your time at it and uh, just do one at a time and you're in pretty good shape to go. Tomorrow I'll get my new valves. Tomorrow sometime in the afternoon I'll get to stick this back in this head. I'm actually going to pull the other head off tonight and go ahead and change all the valve seats and put the head back on because I have all the gaskets to do that. But I can't do this one until the valve comes back in. So I'll give you a quick update and we'll check back in a little bit and figure out where I'm at with this project. Alright, well I've decided to go ahead and pull this head off on the passenger side. To get my valve stem seals on. This is going to be a lot easier. The only thing I've got to do is take off the cam bolts, make sure I put them somewhere and put them in order, and pop off the, uh, I think it's 12 bolts for the head. Don't forget the little three bolts down there. I think those are 10. And your clamp right there for your exhaust. And once you take that off, you're in good shape. That comes right off. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off tonight. And put the valve seals in there, and basically this thing will be torn down to the block, and tomorrow we can start putting it together. Well, me, I. <laughs> so, uh, just wanted to show you that real quick. Other than that, I do need a AC pump that is locked up, and I think I'm going to take that off now. It looks like it'll be easier to take off now, wipe some of the stuff's off, and replace that. Because the air conditioner did work to that locked up. So, other than that, by the way, over there's your battery. <laughs> yep. You gotta take the wheel off and the fender well to get into your battery, but there it is. It's kind of hidden over there on the passenger side of the uh, car. So, so, enough rambling. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this head off and I'll get back with you here and let you know what's going on. Alright, got the cams off. You can see they're pretty straightforward. That little 10 millimeter bolts clear across and kind of put them in a box and knock little holes there. You see they can't go nowhere. That way, if I bump it, shake it. They're in line, and I got my little mark there showing me it's the front of the engine. Now I'm going to take the head bolts off. And tell you what, buy one of these. I use all my get all my used oil. We can lubricate a lot of stuff, especially bolts and stuff. When you let the oil set, great way to use uh, your used motor oil. Nice little thing. Got this at the farm store for I think it's uh, thirteen dollars. Holds about a half a pint or yeah, a whole pint of oil. So I use, I put a lot of used oil up. Makes things a lot easier. No point going out and buying expensive grease to break bolts loose when you can use use uh, used oil, motor oil. But anyway, all you do now is take the head bolts off and you see there are, oh right there, there there's one. I believe it's a 5 eighths. Don't quote me on that or a 15 millimeter. But I'll go ahead and pop this off and I'll get back with you and show you what I've got underneath it here. But this side is a good head. I'm just going to replace the valve seals. Alright, I want to show you one other quick thing here. I'm breaking my head bolts loose now. They are 15s. And uh, what I'm doing is using a regular breaker bar. So I've got a piece of pipe here on the end of it, kind of helping me out here because these bolts on are pretty tight and you don't want to kill yourself. It just makes the job a lot easier. So um, don't be afraid to put a little torque on those bolts. They will eventually break loose. And uh, once you get the bolts out, then that head is ready to come off. I've already got my clamp off here for the exhaust. You can see it's pretty easy. Just push it out of the way. And uh, let's see, looks like all I gotta do now is take those bolts out. Two, four, six, eight big head bolts, and the three little ones, they're out. See them down there, they're tens. They're out, that head should come on off. 
shame I've got to pull the head off just for valve seats, but hey, make it, it'll make, make it worth my time. All right, update soon here. I'll go ahead and take care of that. All right, now I'm getting ready to pull these head bolts off, and I'm going to show you a little trick here. I'm going to set the camera up here, and I'm actually going to use a uh, sort of like an impact wrench. Got a 15 millimeter on it. Bolts are already broke loose, and I'll show you how fast it is. Uh, go ahead and just take them off. Well, I'm going to plug it in first. That one's up. Get plugged in. All right, now we've got power. Now, I'm going to start pulling these out of here. All the head bolts, they're out. All you gotta do is pull them out now and pop the head off, and we should be good to go. So, uh, this makes it a little bit faster, that's all. Too bad you can't put the head bolts on like that, but these are pretty big bolts, these are 15, so two, four, six, eight, and the three little ones up front, and it's ready to come off. And I'll go ahead and pop this off. I'll have to shut the camera off because I don't think I can do this at the same time. But uh, I'll, I'll try it and see what happens here. Let's see. Hopefully you can kind of see that. I'll go ahead and pop that off there. Use this little hammer. There it is. It's off. So I'll go ahead and Take that off. You'll probably have some cool it out down there. There's nothing you can do about that, but don't worry about that. You'll end up changing the oil, I'm sure, in your car anyway. But uh, I'll go ahead and pop this head off, and I'll give you an update shortly. All right, well, got the head off. Let's lay it off to the side and see how dark those cylinders are. Burning oil big time. But like I said, this head gasket on this side is in good shape. I hate to take that head off, but it's easier to do. Uh, it looks like the cylinder walls are in good shape. There's no uh, places in there that are scratched or anything. It's the top ridges are smooth. So, like I said, this car's only got 120,000 miles on it, I believe. Yeah, I have to clean out my rat's nest. But over here's the head, and I did want to tell you one other thing. It's got a little exhaust uh, pipe that goes there. It goes back uh, to the back right there. Go ahead and hook that. Hey, there's one right there. Those are little 10 millimeter bolts. So uh, those come out fairly easy. It's right here, I believe you're, you can see the right, right there. There's a pipe. There's actually uh, two of them. They're just little short pieces of pipe, and it's actually part of the manifold system, I guess. Um, EGR stuff. And there it is. It's kind of laying up there piece of pipe and there, up there's the other one so just so you know um, take the time those bolts actually come loose real easy when it's cold now um, this is mainly 80 percent 75 percent mechanical knowledge and 25 percent patience <laughs> just so you know it does take a little while to get this stuff apart but once you get the, the two heads off all you gotta do is put it back together so tomorrow hopefully my parts will be here and we'll start putting this engine back together. But in the meantime, tonight, I am going to go ahead and take this in the house in the basement where it's warm and put my valve seats in and put it back together. So, hopefully, everything will be okay and we'll, I'll give you an update here a little bit later. All right, I'll tell you something else here. Uh, of course, once I take the manifold off on these heads to get into the uh, valve seals, got to grind the, these bolts off. There's one here, one here. And one here. Of course, the rusted stuff will come off. I already checked the other side. You see, they're just completely sh stripped off there. So I'm just going to cut them off. Like I did with the other head <clears throat> with my grinder. Actually, I'm just using a uh, regular old uh, grinder here. Cut those off. And again, you can take this manifold off, and it makes it easier to work with this head. So, just thought I'd tell you that. And uh, as uh, the work continues, got, it, got the manifold off the head, got all the bolts out, and looks like I am good to go here. Uh, don't worry about all this stuff on the back. This 
EGR smog stuff. You can work around that when you put your valve seals on this head. And actually, the the uh, oh the valves here. One of these things right on over. I can't think tonight what they call them. The lifters. They stayed in the last time I turned the head upside down. So you might want to watch. Don't let them fall out. But uh, if you can pull them out, pull them out. But if they won't come out, just leave them in there. I think they'll probably stay in there. And be careful of your O2 sensors on these uh, manifolds. See this one here? Uh, I almost forgot. I almost broke it, but it's okay. So uh, you might want to take it off. But if you're careful, you can still take the manifold off. And work around that and just kind of put it off the side. I put my parts on one side of the car and put the parts on the other side so I kind of know where they're at. So... I think what I'm going to do now is go ahead and put the seals in the heads and start putting it back together. And I'll give you an update here as I uh, start putting it back together. But if you watch this video so far, you've got a good idea how to tear it apart. So you probably know how to put it together at this point. But I'll just give you an update on my process here. And look how easy that AC pump is to take out now. That baby's coming out because I don't really need it. It doesn't really, the belt doesn't uh, drive anything which is good so uh, i'll take that sucker out of there maybe i'll go ahead and try to get me one tomorrow or next day and put on there so i'll check back in here a little bit and give you an update i don't think it'll be tonight probably be tomorrow as i'm a little a little tired tonight it's 10 o'clock at night so i like to work at night when there's no way around to bother me so get more done and listen to the music tom just kind of passes by <laughs> all right hello youtube we'll give you an update here a little bit later all right, I went on ahead and cleaned up the valves pretty good. It looked nice and clean. I actually used a uh, drill. It's got a uh, wire brush on, on the end of it here, and it makes it really nice to kind of clean. Right here's your river thing. Polish your head. Uh, kind of get some of the carbon off, but I got a lot of the carbon off, so it's looking a lot better. See, there's a little bit there, but... I can take my uh, screwdriver and just kind of chip some of that away or take a piece of sandpaper, but get all your carbon off on your valves, on your exhaust valves, because it'll make it run a little bit cooler, just so you know. So I'll go ahead and clean this up here, and I'll get back with you a little bit later. All right, I'm back at it tonight. Uh, I, you, you know, I decided to go ahead and take the oil pan off because I am going to have a hard time getting off that uh, gear there for the... Uh, Oh, the timing gear on the bottom of the crank, so I'm going to have to get a good puller. I used a puller on tonight. It was small, but it just broke the puller. That thing is on a really good, so I'm going to have to probably go to the store tomorrow and rent something or uh, figure out a way to get that off. But one thing I did want to show you here is I got the dipstick out of the oil pan, and there's one bolt here on the dipstick up here that bolts back here on the back of the uh, one of the bracks that I took off. But... I went ahead and took the oil pan off. I wanted to show you this. And it was real easy. I didn't have to do much of anything. I just loosened all the bolts. And I actually went ahead and loosened up the motor mount just in case. But I did that for nothing. As you can see, there's the oil pan setting. Took it off. It was pretty easy. There's the bottom of the motor and stuff. Let me get the light. And you can see uh, it's actually pretty clean under there. No problems. And there's the oil sump. I'm going to take that off there and clean it and everything because I do hear that sometimes they get plugged up and all that good stuff. And, and, and you can kind of see here how it kind of runs up. The uh, pump there runs up. Let's see, get my light there straight. And there's a tube that goes up to the bottom of the oil pump on the front of the engine. So I'm going to just uh, kind of clean this up. And you can, the gasket is still on the uh, block. This is a reusable gasket. So I'm just going to kind of clean this up a little bit and put it back on here. And the way I got this dipstick out of the oil pan, I took a pair of vice grips right here, put it on the uh, dipstick, and I took a hammer and just kind of tapped it and popped it right out of the uh, oil pan. So uh, that worked out pretty good. It's, it just kind of slides in there and there's a little, little tiny O-ring. I don't know if you can see that right there. Don't tear that because that might cause you a leak later. But I just want to show you if you you're probably not going to have to go this far if you're just replacing the timing chains. But in case you do want to pull the oil pan, 
It's pretty straightforward. It came off real easy. A couple small bolts uh, back here in the back, uh, up in there. I believe there's one of them there. One there. I think they're little tens, and the rest of these are fifteens uh, that come clear around. So, uh, uh, other than that, it uh, came off. I'm just going ahead and kind of clean everything, everything up here and show you the oil pan real quick. This is the thing in it. Uh, doesn't look too bad. Just some crud. Uh, a little bit of crud here and there. Not too bad. I've seen worse. Pieces of the timing gear. Uh, the plat though guides actually in there but uh clean this out and i'll put it back in there and the only thing I'm, I'm waiting on right now is my chain and my guides they haven't come in yet hopefully tomorrow tomorrow's friday get those in here then i'll go ahead and start putting this together tomorrow but i did clean up the uh cylinders pretty nicely here let me get my light back out here i just took a drill and just kind of polished them up a little bit and Got a little oil on that one from the engine there, kind of still bleeding a little bit. Kind of like open heart surgery. And you see cylinders in really good shape. So, like I said, if you're just replacing the chains on the front of the engine, you're not going to have to pop the heads off or anything. But just in case, this is uh, uh, something here you might want to deal with. Kind of know if you're going to do that. So, other than that, I'll uh, come back here a little bit and show you where I'm at. Hopefully uh, this will be wrapping up here really soon because I'm probably running out of memory on this camera. <laughs> hey guys, uh, I just wanted to show you that I did get my package today finally from FedEx. I got my guides and chains, but I wanted to show you what all I got. I got the oil tensioner, brand new one that came with the uh, package. I got water pump, got a, got a gasket, got all the good stuff here. Put this car back together. Even got a brand new water pump. Back here, I've got the oil pump, and up front i got the chains. Now when you get the chains, some of these chains come with gold links, some come with dark links. Now the dark links, when you get it, you'll freak out. You'll think, oh, where's the links? I won't be able to time it up, timing marks. But there are timing marks. You have to look very carefully. I don't know if you can see that. You see how those links uh, right there where my thumb is, how they're kind of dark. You probably can't see very well in here. Let's see, they're a little darker. Those are the ones you got to look for. And to make it easier, you might take a little uh, fingernail polish, white fingernail polish, just and mark those links when you put the chain chain back on the gears. That way you can get it in the right time. And basically, you got all your oil tensioners, your guides, which I really did need on that car. You got your gears, the crank gear. I'm going to have a problem getting the one off on the car outside. Um, it doesn't have a mark on it for some reason from the factory, but if you look very carefully right there, if you can see that, let me see if I can get a better picture of it. There is the mark, timing mark. Now the one on my car does not have a mark on the timing gear, so I'm going to have to somehow get that gear off of the car today. But I'll let you know later how I did that. But I just wanted to show you, I did get all the stuff, and <laughs> what's cool... 100 I only paid paid a hundred and let's see my camera focus here 134 dollars and it was free shipping so you can't beat this with all these parts for that car but anyway i just wanted to show you what i got today and uh i think that's about it and of course i've got all my other parts of the other um kit i got with the head gaskets and stuff but the water pump is going to really make this car a lot different because those things go bad often, I hear, and this is what causes the engine to disintegrate. So, definitely want to replace the water pump if you're going to go in and replace the timing chain. It's just it's just good uh, insurance, sort of. So, anyway, I'll, I'll start putting this back together, and I'll give you an update a little bit later and let you know what's going on with it. And hopefully, maybe later today, or tonight, I'll have this thing going, because tonight, we set our clocks ahead. It's March, spring forward, and I'll have some more daylight to work with and all that so um, I just wanted to show you what I got here and uh, we'll get back with you here in a bit all right uh, guys I finally figured out how to get I got the gear off what you gotta do is take a heating torch I have a little heating torch I just tuck it back in the house you can probably still see it smoking there a little bit <laughs> but uh, what I did I took a pair of pliers I mean a three claw cleat three claw uh, grips and I kind of ground down the end there I don't know if you can see them enough to get behind that gear 
Uh, they do make a special tool for that you can buy or rent, but uh, it's whatever you want to do. Uh, if you do that, if you can get the gear behind, uh, get the claws behind the gear, you can get that gear off and you can see it's off, it's hot. But uh, that's how you get it off. And I wanted to show you real quick that I'm not crazy. If you look at this gear real close up, there is no timing marks on this gear whatsoever. I don't know why, what they were thinking when they put this gear on this car. Why did you not put a timing mark on it? I guess just to make your life a living hell. hell. But no timing marks whatsoever. And uh, that was my big concern at the time. Put the gears off and I want to go ahead and stick my new one on. And hopefully we'll be able to get this car together later today. But that's what you got to do. Now to put it on, I'll show you here in a few minutes what you got to do. I found a trick online uh, to put this gear back on what you got to do. But I'm going to go ahead and stick the oil pump and the water pump in. And I'll check back here in a little bit. Look like the hardest part's done here. All I got to do is start putting things together. So I'll check back here shortly. Oh yeah, and one other thing. Like I said, I hated to r ruin my claws, but uh, I think we, I can still use them. I didn't take that much off. But one thing I did want to tell you, in order to keep your engine from turning, when you're trying to break that gear loose, take two head bolts, put them like that, put a couple sockets in a cylinder, and that will keep that cylinder from moving, and you'll have good grip when you're taking that uh, uh, bolt off there, just uh, so you know. I almost forgot to tell you that, but it's one of my tricks there I learned a long time ago. So, all right. I'll go ahead and start putting this thing back together, and I'll check back in here shortly. Yeah, hey, I did want to show you this. Remember, I was telling you about the timing marks. So, well, there's that one on that gear, and you can see how the slot there has a place. Uh, there's a place cut in the gear there for the wrist pin, and there's a little timing gear. Now, here is the old gear. There's the slot cut in, and there is a timing mark. You have to look really hard to see it. Let me see if I can zoom in here. It is right there. That little marker you see right there, at the bottom, is a timing mark. You believe that? No wonder I couldn't find it. If I can point at it, it is right there. That little mark right there. Little tiny mark. That's the timing mark. So how was I was ever supposed to see that? So if you're not going to change your gear, just keep in mind there's a timing mark. Just come down here to the gear and count uh, one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you would go, the camera zoomed here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, the seventh tooth, there's a place cut in right there, and if you go at the bottom, right that little scratch mark, maybe they took a punch to it, I don't know, that's your timing mark on that gear so just so you know but uh, I don't know the things I go through see this has got a cut on it here so that gives me a good idea where the timing mark would have been the new one doesn't do that see there's no cut there only on the inside like this one here only on the inside there's a cut mark but anyway enough of time enough uh, wasting time with that but I just wanted to show you that and we'll go ahead and stick this together now uh, one thing you want to do when you get your oil pump in case I I uh, don't want to forget this your new oil pump make sure you take oil and prime it put it down in that hole there and soak this thing real good for oil before you put it on the engine in case I forget to tell you that but I may actually remember that when I start putting it back together so all right I'll check back in here when I get some of the stuff together and we'll drop the old I'm gonna, I got the gear off I'm gonna take the oil pump off now and uh, the sump, we'll clean the sump off real good and everything. We'll put all this back together here and put the oil pan back on it. And I'll check back in here in a little bit and show you what I've done so far. All right, getting ready to stick the new oil pump in. I primed it with oil. Make sure you get oil in yours. Prime it real good. I just used some used oil because I'm going to have to change the oil eventually in this. And also, I just for the heck of it, I want to head right there. Put a little silicone on there, dark RTV stuff, just to, where the oil pump goes. They don't give you a gasket, but I figured it wouldn't hurt to have that uh, sealed off there. It just gives it a better uh, tight fit, I guess, and you don't have to worry about leaks. Give you, maybe give you a little more oil pressure, just so you know. But that's going on next, and we'll continue here. 
Hey guys, okay, I want to show you what I'm doing here. I got my torch on the gear down there in the bottom, and what I have at some old sprockets. A piece of pipe would have worked. I ran a bolt into the uh, crankshaft there, and all I'm doing now is turning it, tightening it up here. Of course, I got my, uh, you know, you got the cylinder locked up here. Now, as you watch this here, you can see it, it's going on slowly. I, trust me, the heat makes a big difference, and you can see it's going all the way on slowly pushing back in there so good idea to do put some heat on it and if you don't have any gears get your, you can probably cut a piece of pipe uh, to actually get this to work pretty good there so you can see it's just about on and uh, right there it looks like it's in there as far as I can get it and we are good to go. it looks like it's about as far as it'll go because you can only get it in there so far but I'm going to go ahead and just double check everything here. And, um, if you have any other problems, like I said, taking it off, put, put the heat on that gear. And uh, when you uh, take it off, put the heat on it. Put the heat on it when you put it on. Something like that. But anyway, you get the idea. So that is the hardest part of this engine. Everything else is going to be a piece of cake now. I can turn my heat off and continue here. And now you can see uh, how long my bolt is here as I take this out. There's the two gears I used. There's that one. And there's that one. You can see the gears all the way on like it like it should be there as my camera focus focuses. But you can see the bolt I'm using just something I had laying around. Pretty long bolt. Just make sure it goes into crankshaft okay. Match, match your other bolt up. Matter of fact, I can show you the, the original crankshaft bolt to hold the damper on. You can see the different sizes here is here so you know I'm using an extra long bolt just to have a little extra torque to push that gear on and the more threads you have in that crank the less you don't have to worry about damage and stripping the threads with the, the original one so other than that um, I'll continue here and I'll give you an update here in a little bit all right I also get my air conditioning pump on if your pump is bad now would be a great time to replace it it's easy to do this one only has three bolts. You got one here, one down the bottom, and one back here on the top. Uh, I went to a parts store. Actually, junk here and got this for uh, forty dollars, and uh, seems in pretty good shape. So, big good idea if your pump is bad, uh, do that now. As I continue to slowly put this thing together, I wanted to, um, I wanted to show you one little trick here. I did put some uh, paint. If you can see that there, like uh, kind of little paint on the crank here where the, the, the hole is to kind of give me a better idea where the tooth is. And I know what you're thinking, like how are you going to ever get that lined up to see it? Well, actually I just figured out a decent way in front of the car. Just come up here in front of the car and you can zoom in. Actually you can look. And you can see the mark there on the tooth. That's how you line that up. So uh, here in a few minutes I'll go ahead and put the chain on and I'll show you what I mean. But that's one way you can look at it there if you can't I uh, see it when you're looking straight up on it because I know it's kind of hard but uh, just came up with that idea but the pumps in the oil pans on and uh, and then we'll put the water pump on next and uh, continue here all right guys I uh, want to show you when you're putting your cam back in and everything make sure you put grease on all the lobes that way you won't have a problem starting this thing up and oil not getting up here in time but it's a good I bet to do this. I did it on the bottom of the journal and I'm going to do it on the top of the caps when I put them on there. Actually, I've already I'm pretty much finished. All I got to do now is just uh, bolt the caps on it. Make sure you do that and when you put your new guide in here, your oil tensioner, just kind of leave the little pin uh, in there until you get ready to uh, pretty much finish up everything. Then you can pull that pin out. But leave it in there until you get this uh, pretty much torqued back down. And make sure you do not over tighten those cap bolts when you put them back on. I think the, uh, I believe 12 pounds, it's not much. So you don't want to strip those bolts and those aluminum heads. That could be a bad day. So we'll continue here and we'll uh, show you what's coming up here in a few minutes. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, like we're talking about the oil and the uh, camel over here, make sure you put some good grease on there. Uh, it's very important, make sure you already got the crank at the number one position sensor uh, position sensor number one crank make sure you got it all the way up into the uh, top dead center and there's the mark on the uh, 
my camera would focus here. Let me try this again. There's the mark on the oil pump. I painted it white, and there's the mark on the crank gear. Ah, stupid camera. And make sure you have those in the right position because you don't want to tighten up those bolts on the uh, cam and bend the valve. But that's very important. Make sure you do that first before you even start putting your uh, cam back together and timing and all that. But you can see I put a little paint on it. You might want to do the same thing as I'll explain here in a few minutes when I get ready to wrap this thing up. I've even put paint on my chain where the dark links were so you cannot F up. And we'll go over this here in a few minutes and show you what I did, put this chain on and everything. So uh, I'll back here in a second. The uh, bearings on and got it all tightened down and everything. I got the uh, camshaft and uh, everything's back. And like I said, when you put everything in the uh, right order, when you take it off, you take just a little extra time, everything will go back on exactly the way it came off and you will not, I repeat, not have any issues uh, trying to figure out and this this just saves so much time so you can see all my parts are gone They're back on this side like they should be and now we'll start working on the other side here and Look like we're getting to the end here. I'm getting pretty happy. Also, I'm a little tired. It's been three days Well, actually been four days. So here and there actually it's been about four days about three to four hours a day So hopefully tonight we'll get this thing finished up and started all right, now I'm doing the passenger side. Like I said, very important to keep everything kind of lubed up. Or put some grease on your uh, camshaft, bear, uh, camshaft there, and on the caps and so forth. And also, like I said, if you got everything uh, in, in order, when you put it back together, it won't be no problem. I even put a little arrow up on the front of the box there. Now you can't really see it now. That uh, is the direction of the engine. That's how those caps go on the bottom row and the top row. So make sure you do that, and you should be okay. And we'll continue here. It looks like I'm going to have this thing put together here pretty soon. So hopefully I'll get it all together and uh, we'll get it started here. But the only major thing i got to do is get this timing chain on here. And I'll go over that with you here in a few seconds. Actually, a few minutes. Whatever it takes. Looks like it may be this. Uh, probably another hour I can get that on there. But see the new water pump on there and the new pump, oil pump, all that good stuff. Now I'm going to do the guides and get the chains on next. And looks like things are rolling along now pretty good. Okay, with this timing chain, what I've done, I went ahead and stuck the timing chain in here. And like I said earlier, I went ahead and painted my marks on my chain white. There's a mark down here on the crankshaft, if you can see that. Down there, and I painted the chain. And on this side, the cam, which I don't have the gear on, the links, there's double links. So you know the two links will go on this side. So I painted both of those links, so you'll know to fish that up through here. So the first thing you want to do is get the chain around the crank. Don't worry about all that down right now timing it. Bring the chain up here, make sure it's on the link there, and make sure it's on that little dot right there. If you can see that dot right there, put my thumb on it, that's your timing mark on this side. So do that first, and go ahead and put your bolts in the uh, cam here, the uh, gear. You'll have to use the old one, of course. They don't give you a new one, but you got a new gear there, and, and use the old, I think it's a damper wheel pulley, I'm not sure sort of a different up design. So you put that on, and uh, then we'll go over here and we'll do the other side here in a second. Uh, while I was doing that, I went on ahead and installed the guide on this side. I almost forgot to tell you that before you put the wheel on there, the gear. Go ahead and get that new guide put in down there. You can kind of see it there. Did a little hole, I don't know, but there's a new time and chain guide in there. Uh, kind of hard to see. There we go, the down there it is. Put that one in on this side. And go over here and stick the other one on this side. That's what I've done so far. And don't do any other guide yet. Once you get those two guides in, then get this wheel here, put the chain on, get the mark on, like I said. Then go over here to the other side, and we'll do that here in a second. And um, one more tip 
Uh, I took a pair of vice grips and put them up here in this cam and kind of turned it a little bit in order to get this second bolt in there. It's kind of tight. You can see it's real close there, but I got it in there. Just turn that head just a little bit, uh, not to head the uh, camshaft, and you should be able to get access to both these bolts pretty good. And you can tighten this down. And I wouldn't tighten it all the way up just yet, torque it or anything, because when you do these cams, uh, what I usually do is take a pair of vice grips. I have another set here. I'll put two on this cam, and you can really tighten these bolts up. You do both sides that way, and you can really tighten these uh, gears up on the on the uh, cams here. So just so you know that. And uh, other than that, it looks like it's going together pretty good here. And if I can think of anything else, any other tips that would help you out, I'll kind of let you know here. But it's kind of hard to remember everything, but I'm trying to do this in order also. So there's that uh, gear and cam and chain. Like I said, it's on right where it should be, the mark. Uh, kind of hard to see when you get this uh, damper on it, but the mark was down there as I showed you here a minute ago. Now I'm going to go over here and we're going to work on this one and get this one done. All right, all you hardworking 27 people, 2735, uh, I forget what the other engine they make. Basically, they're all the same, but I've got the time and chain in. I'm going to go over some, some quick steps here so you'll know what to do. So what did I do? Well, first thing I did, I put the inner guide on, which is right down there on the left side. It's a little short guide. I bolted it in, measure access plug to get in there. Uh, to get that bolt. I think you can see it there. Then I went to this side, driver's side, did the same thing. I put that guide in there. There's a plug for that one, the excess. You can probably see the bolt up in there uh, somewhere right there. Then I went and put this guide on down here. And I put this guide on last. But what I did was I started the chain before I put this guide there on, which is the one the oil, uh, uh, the oil unit goes on this side here so I can actually flex this around so I, what I did on the chain I marked there's paint there is your mark I marked on the chain and there's well, you'll say where's the timing mark well if you look at this wheel I get this stupid light set up see that little uh, circle right there well that is where the uh, timing is on this particular uh, gear so I marked it right there in dead center paint because if you remember the old wheel that was on it had a timing mark right there. See that circle? There's your timing mark. Well, it's the same thing here. There's the circle on the gear. The timing mark is right above it. The same tooth. Same thing on the passenger side. See the little circle right there? Well, directly above it, that is your uh, mark on your tooth. Of course, you can't see it now, but I actually put a little bit of paint. You can see the paint. Kind of hard to see there. Um, on the top of that chain, there's the paint on the chain. I put a little paint on the wheel there on this on the, uh, this part right there. That way I know I'm dead center there. And on the bottom, I'll put the light here where you can see the crank. And there's the crankshaft. I'll zoom in here and see that mark. I put on the chain the paint, and there's the white mark on the oil pump with the little pointy mark there that is dead center and there's the mark on the gear it's a little a round thing a punch mark on your crank gear timing gear all three of those match they're right in line perfect so I'm actually looking through the front of the car the grill that's the advantage when you take out the radiator you can see in there so that's what I've done and how do you keep the cams from moving well good old American vice grips Get you a couple pair of vice grips. Just play around. Turn the cams just a little bit at a time. Lock one side. Slide the chain on the wheel. And kind of get this wheel set up with the two bolts. You know, go ahead and tighten it down. That way you know this side's in time. Then you go down to the crank. I actually took a uh, cloth and a screwdriver to kind of put a little pressure in between the chain and this guide so the chain wouldn't slip off. That way I kept my mark here. And you can see there's still plenty of slack in the chain, so all I gotta do is turn this crank a little bit, move this tensioner over, and screw in my oil uh, oil plug here. The uh, I wish I could remember the name of this thing. I'm having one of those nights tonight. Uh, the oil tensioner here. This is the old one. Of course, I've got a brand new one. I'm gonna stick in that came with the kit. And basically, 
Uh, make sure you tighten all your bolts up good and tight. Uh, keep the vice grips on the cams there. Grip the cam where, uh, don't grab it on the lobes. Grab it somewhere where there's no uh, mechanical wear. And on this side, do the same thing. And look at, keep your old gears, look at your old gears, and you can kind of figure out, take your time what the timing marks should be. And that's what I have done so far. And I've kept it in perfect time. If you keep all those marks just like that, like I said, there on that side, and that side in the bottom, you know it's in perfect time. There's no way it can be out of time. Now what I'm going to do before I put the front cover on this is take the crankshaft, uh, I'm not on the crank, take the uh, uh, ratchet and I'm going to put it on the crankshaft and I'm going to turn this two revolutions and make sure everything's free and nothing's hitting because that way you will know that also that it's in perfect time. Then all I got to do is put the front cover on it and put the valve pan covers on the intake and do a little bit of wiring here and I can actually start this thing up. I'm actually going to crank it over and I recommend you do the same thing with the uh, either the um, fuel pump fuel fuse out which is in here I've already got it in hook or disconnect the uh, keep the uh, fuel injectors uh, disconnected electronically and crank it over let the oil kind of get circulated through the engine before you actually do a first start so we'll try that here in a little bit but I'll go ahead and put this together and hopefully this will give you some idea how to get this thing in time and all that but like I said just take your time and walk away and come back and you should be okay but it looks pretty good there with the oil pump and the uh, water pump and the oil pump looks like everything's pretty good so if this runs I'll be pretty proud of myself this is probably the third one I've done and I wouldn't recommend this for the first time mechanic this is uh, pretty involved but if you've tore a few engines apart and done some work you can easily do this if you just take your time and do a little research, go online and get the timing marks. Make sure you know what you're doing before you do all this and uh, you should be okay. So I've rambled on, talked a little too much here. I'm going to go ahead and put this together and I'll check back here in a little bit and let you know how it's going. And hopefully she'll be running here soon. Okay, uh, YouTube uh, peeps, I did screw up here uh, on the left, on the driver's side cam. The timing marks here, you have to do it with the arrows. I did it with the dot. See that little arrow right there? On the cam, make sure your uh, mark is on that arrow, not the little dots. Now on the passenger side, it's fine. You can use the little dot. I thought something was not quite right when I was looking here. Uh, let me get this light set up here, and you can kind of see this side's okay. It's a uh, white mark is right on the dot so I'll have to go over here and pull this chain off real quick and switch this around and make sure it's right but uh, what are you gonna do I'll have to put a footnote in here but hopefully you'll catch that before uh, you get it uh, too far apart but that was my mistake there so I'll go ahead and change this around here well I thought when I was checking the timing everything was good and over here this was just a little off that mark was down there it wasn't dead center like it should be. It should have been up here on, on the uh, top. It should have been right up here. So I knew something wasn't quite right and I went and did some research online. Turns out it has to be on that arrow. So make sure you uh, get that arrow in there right on the dot. So I'll fix it real quick here and, and show you what's going on. Hopefully that will take very long. Uh, oh well, that's the way it is. I must be getting tired. <laughs> All right, I got everything together. Uh, the only thing I can uh, tell you is uh, the little marks back here. This is very important on this cam. Uh, they're, they're 90 degrees from the floor up. So basically, I thought that mark should be dead center on that cam. It's actually a link up this way, and this one's the same way. It's a link uh, sort of toward the center of the engine. So. Uh, as long as you have the uh, driver's side on the arrow, I can't believe I missed that, but I got it on the arrow. There's a little arrow in there, if you can see it or not. It's hard to see. You may have to clean the grease off of your uh, cam in order to see it. I don't think I'm going to be able to... Eh, it's hard, so hard to see. There, there it is. Little arrow. See it? It's a red arrow on both of these cams. you got to make sure you get that on the... Uh, Link the gold, black, whatever you got, not that dot, and same on the other cam beside it. So, uh, like I said, at the passenger side, you use the little dots. So, uh, other than that, I can't think of anything else. I'm gonna go ahead and put the front cover on it now. Oh, I did want to show you the uh, 
why these engines explode, come apart. This is the original water pump. Check out this gasket. It is basically imploded itself. It is completely just trashed. This is the original water pump that came with the car. Uh, it is done, so I got a new water pump in and that should take care of any moisture problems. I did see a little bit of moisture in the uh, oil cap. That You know that white milky look you get when you have an oil, a water leak in your engine? I uh, saw that, but uh, yeah, this thing is trash. So it will go over here in my pile of trepid goodies, what's left. So, all right, I'll go ahead and get this thing together here and uh, we'll get it started here in a little bit. And uh, I got my oil sensor in, not oil sensor, the uh, oil, uh, I, I just knew what the name of it was there, but it basically is an oil tensioner. It, it make, makes that guide there, gives you all this uh, tension, takes the tension out of the guide here. So, got that in, and there's a way to release that. I'm supposed to uh, push it back and push it forward again, and it releases the tension on that, but it also comes up as soon as the uh, car starts. So, hopefully I'll, may have to read into that just a little bit more, make sure it's, I'm doing it okay. So we'll uh, go ahead and put the rest of this together here and start up. Up, I'm anxious to hear it run, see how it goes, and we'll be back here shortly. Okay, uh, YouTubers, mechanics, uh, well, I finally got it together, and I've actually backed it out of my garage today. I got sick for about a week, had to stop, now I'm feeling much better, and it actually warmed up, and we've lost all the snow that we've had. We had probably... Got two feet of snow out here, but it's finally gone. It's starting to warm up. It's starting to feel like spring. Finally, we're getting in the middle of March here. But got the engine all together. I don't have any made anything missing. It's uh, all together, and I actually started it up and backed it out. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up here and show you what it sounds like. And I think I'm really happy with it. Excuse my mess. I've got some other issues here. I've got to deal with some smaller things, especially the. My blower only blows on high. One, two, and three don't work, but I'm gonna actually make a video on how to fix that. But I'm gonna go ahead and start this up, and you can see this car's only got 130, 131,000 miles on it. So it's actually low miles, considering. <laughs> but they're running. No gauges are on, no check engine lights. Everything looks pretty good. I hope my I hope you can see everything because it's a bright sunny day for a change. But you can see it's idling pretty good. It seems to idle a little slow. Uh, and check this out, no more smoke. I mean, look at this tailpipe, how clean it is. No more, a little bit of steam there. You can see it, let me, there it is. There it is. That is just steam. But I should have made a video before I had uh, put all this on here because it was smoking so bad, it was it was embarrassing. But there it is, it's running. If you, if you, know if you can hear it, Let's give it some gas. Sounds great. Well, hopefully this will give you some idea what you got to do if you're going to work on one of these two sevens. Like I said, they have a bad reputation, but I think that goes with any engine if you don't treat it right. Yeah, there's a problem with breathing, and make sure your uh, crank case dent right here. Make sure it's not broken, and actually might want to make a different one, because these things are very flimsy. If these get broken, plugged up, or cracked, yeah, your engine is not going to suck it in the uh, crank case dent fumes like it's supposed to and your engine will get all sludged up which is the biggest problem I guess they had with these engines and to show you I'm gonna there's the oil cap can't see in there but it's pretty clean and the oil is getting slung around pretty good in there so and I don't have any moisture in my cap so I know it's all together but I'm very happy with this engine I actually just got it legal yesterday and we'll start driving it and I don't know what it is about these cars but I've got to replace two sway bar bushings on the front of this thing they're both squeaking and cracking but and also I got my uh, hood supports coming tomorrow for the front and back eBay $20 for two of them that's an amazing deal but there's a look at the car good looking car hopefully if you're working on one of these you'll have good luck and 
like I said, just take your time at it, take lots of notes, and you should be okay. Um, one other thing, when I first got the engine, the car, I knew the car sounded okay. I just knew it had some problems. But if this thing had a rod knocking or the engine sounded like crap or the valves were rattling, I wouldn't have um, fixed it and went through all this trouble. I only did it. Oh yeah, I did forget to mention one thing. I, I've got to put all my air cleaner, cleaner stuff back on here. That's why it's look, looking a little empty there. But I've got a few minor things to put back on, like the heat shields that go over the uh, uh, the uh, exhaust down there, which they're in there. It's not a big deal to put on, but some little things to tinker with. That's why the engine looked a little, uh, I guess, skinny there. But uh, other than that, that's pretty good. And uh, like I said, good luck with all your projects. If you have any questions, Feel free to leave me a question. I'll try to answer it as best I can. Later, guys. And women and mechanics.